I'm a professor of behavioral decision making here at the Leeds University Business School, where I co-direct the Center for Decision Research. Welcome all at the Center for Decision Research here. Um, and uh, I was also the principal investigator on the ERSAC proposal that led to uh, this food seminar series. And today I'm just going to give a very brief uh, presentation of what we've learned about uh, from this seminar series, from our participants, from the discussions that we've had, and from additional interviews that we've done with some of the uh, seminar participants about the future of consumer research and communications about food. Um, so, just to give you a little bit of background, um, our uh, ERSAC proposals had a, a, a large clunky name, seminar series on food options, opinions and decisions, which we then um, um, shortened to food, uh, integrating perspectives on consumer perceptions of food safety, nutrition and food waste. Um, I was the PI on the proposal, but really the seminar series was uh, run, co-directed by uh, Dr. Nikki Baun, and uh, Dr. Kubanu Kaptan, who are also both here at the Center for Decision Research at the University Business School. And our team of co-investigators included uh, Professor Louise Dai uh, from the Human Appetite Research Unit at the University of Leeds, Professor Lynn Frewer from Agriculture, Food and Rural Development Department at Newcastle University, um, Tom Quested, Dr. Tom Quested from REP, um, of course focusing on um, reducing food waste, uh, Dr. Sean Thomas at the Food Standards Agency, um, focusing on improving food safety, and Hannah Preston, in the back, um, uh, provided uh, research and administrative support. Um, and in our proposal, we argued we need uh, better communications uh, for consumers about food. Um, better communications would be needed for food safety, because there are 17 million cases a year, of foodborne illnesses um, in the UK, including 500 deaths and 20,000 hospitalizations. Uh, in the domain of nutrition, we also need better communications because people are increasingly making unhealthy food choices, as we discussed today, uh, with 62% of adults being overweight or obese. Um, and then in the domain of food waste, we also need better communications uh, because domestic food waste is um, 7 million tons a year, of which four 0.2 million tons is estimated to be preventable. Now, um, different agencies uh, and experts in different domains are communicating about food safety, nutrition, and food waste to consumers. But those messages um, are often focusing on only one of these topics and not the interaction of those topics. And so it could be that communications about these topics may unintentionally contradict each other, right? So if we're pr promoting um, s um, more healthy eating, uh, we might encourage consumers to uh, buy fresh food, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, and fresh food is more perishable, so that may lead to concerns about food safety. Uh, but if consumers are concerned about food sa safety, they may throw out food that is still edible and uh, create food waste. So we need communications that promote all of these things, more food safety, uh, more nutrition, and less food waste. So um, our proposal for this seminar series that was funded by the ERSRC aimed to understand and improve UK consumers' decisions about nutrition, food safety, and domestic food waste, focusing especially on the interactions between these domains. We brought together academics and practitioners from across the UK and overseas in nine seminars completed between 2015 to 2017, and today is the last one. Um, and we uh, aimed to build lasting networks between uh, academics and practitioners working in nutrition, food safety, and domestic food waste um, so that we uh, could promote interactions, learn from each other, um, uh, start research project together, um, and communicate develop new communications together. So in 2015, the seminars included um, seminars um, entitled Practitioners' Perspectives on Consumers' Choices about Food Safety, Nutrition and Waste. The second one in 2015 was on Consumer Behavior and Food Security, Health, Safety and Sustainability. And the third one was on Food Choice and Behavior, Nutrition Interventions and Implications for Waste. In 2016, we had 
three seminars as well. The first one was on psychological and sociological factors contributing to waste, nutrition and food safety. The second one was on communicating better about food. The third one was on the role of supermarkets in consumer food choices and sustainable strategies. And then in 2017, um, the first seminar was on integrating perspectives on consumer perceptions for food safety, nutrition and waste. And the second one on food security and novel food solutions, implications for food choice, safety and waste. And today you were present at the final seminar uh, on facing the future of foods uh, with speakers um, Professor Hanelon Daniel um, from the University of Munich, Adam Smith from the Real Junk Food Project, uh, Professor Tim Benton from the University of Leeds, now you're listening to me, and then uh, Louise Dye um, will um, um, close. Um, and our discussant was Jay Rayner. Thank you. Um, so in addition to having discussions in every seminar, we also interviewed um, some of our participants um, to uh, learn more about um, um, where people think uh, the future of uh, consumer research and communications about food should be. Um, we interviewed seven to ten experts from each area of expertise, including uh, people from academia, industry and government agencies, in uh, five semi-structured group interviews conducted over the phone. And so I'll briefly discuss the findings from our seminar discussions and these interviews. Um, a report will be uh, released soon. Um, the uh, first set of findings was that we need better communications across topics. And so to communicate better to promote nutritious eating with a minimum of food waste, um, our participants thought we needed to focus our communications on how to effectively shop, on how to cook and preserve food, um, and to um, um, improve understanding that frozen vegetables are healthy to eat, and to help consumers plan for smaller portions, um, which is good for health, but also for uh, reducing food waste. The second set of findings for this topic was that to promote um, nutritious eating, um, as well as uh, food safety, um, we need, would need to focus our communications on how to safely prepare food at home, and to communicate about how long the food could be kept safely if it is to prepare it in advance. The third um, finding within this set was that to communicate about nutritious eating with a minimum, uh, or so, I'm sorry, food safety uh, with a minimum of food waste, we need better date labels because at present date labels are often confusing to, for consumers. And we need communications about how long to keep leftovers and food frozen. The second set of findings focus on communication development. So our participants um, agreed that communication should be clear and consistent across the topics of nutrition, food waste and food safety so that they're not in competition with each other in terms of what we're telling consumers. But also it's important that communications are developed with the involvement of consumers, right? Um, so uh, if you involve consumers in the development of communications, whether those are brochures, websites or interventions, then uh, what your communications are um, talking about will be um, in, in consumers' preferred language. If you leave experts on their own developing communications, they use wording that consumers don't necessarily understand or would use to describe their food choices. Moreover, if you involve consumers in the development of communications, um, they are more likely, the communications are more likely to discuss the information that consumers actually want or need to inform their food choices, rather than just focusing on what experts think is compelling. Um, Moreover, if you involve consumers in the development of communications, you're more likely to address the socioeconomic and cultural factors that are actually relevant to consumers' food-related decisions. Um, it was also highlighted by our participants that it's important to collaborate with the media to prevent inaccuracies in reporting about food and to collaborate with the industry and policymakers to develop communications from farm to fork. And then finally, it's important to evaluate the effectiveness of communications before they are disseminated using qualitative and quantitative methods. If we don't evaluate our communications before we disseminate them, we run the risk of uh, um, um, disseminating communications that actually are not informative, that do not um, help consumers to make more informed decisions. And if that's the case, we're wasting our time, we're wasting our money, we're wasting consumers' time, and we may lose consumers' trust. 
Um, a third finding from our seminars and from the additional interviews that we've done is that um, interventions uh, may not just include standard communications like brochures or websites or so on, but it may also include uh, newer strategies such as social media, development of apps, smart food labeling, adding cameras to the fridge at home so that you know what you have in your fridge, um, cooking classes, breakfast clubs, and pledges, and of course all of these things would need to be um, evaluated. So in conclusion, uh, the future of consumer research and communications about food may need um, collaboration across topic areas, across nutrition, food safety and food waste, including both academics and practitioners. Um, um, it should focus on perhaps the traditional strategies for communication, but also include new technologies and rel rely on a diversity of quali qualitative and quantitative methods. Um, and of course there may be other um, areas that we should focus on, such as today we also discussed increasing food prices and changing the food system. Um, and so what are the ways forward? Um, well, at least for, this, for us in this room and for this seminar series, um, I think we need ongoing interaction. So today is the last seminar in the ESRC funded food series, but Louise Dye will give a presentation next in which he will discuss um, how we will uh, continue to have these seminars and will continue to come together uh, to learn from each other about these um, uh, different ways of communicating to consumers about food. Um, and of course it would be helpful to get more funding, so if you have any suggestions to find um, more funding then we should definitely talk. Um, and um, so I hope that we, to, we can work together to uh, better understand how consumers make decisions about food and to help consumers to make more informed decisions towards safer, more healthy eating with minimum food waste. Thank you.